dog, but I set the atmosphere before I left home. I was coming to worship God in spirit and in truth. Amen, somebody. Y'all ain't saying that. Let's govern ourselves accordingly. But God has been good to us. And we come to worship God in spirit and in truth. Wholeheartedly and faithfully in the beauty of holiness. Amen. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Yes. Matter of fact, thank God for our forefathers and our ancestors because this is Black History Month. Y'all ain't saying that. There you go. I'm proud about it. Yes, I am. Yes, yes. God has been good to us. Hello, somebody. Y'all ain't saying that. Y'all still talking amongst yourself, but I say God has been good to us. Do y'all hear me what I say? God has been good to us. Amen. We come to worship God in spirit and in truth. We come to set the atmosphere. If you haven't said it before you left home, I know I did. I come to, I come to get God glory on this morning. Amen. And we come to honor Dr. Monroe. Amen. And the Joyce Scholarship Day. Hello, somebody. Yes, yes. We come to honor Dr. Monroe. Dr. Monroe pastored this church for about 50 years. Y'all ain't saying that. Amen. I, I remember Dr. Monroe when I was a young lad. I used to come here and visit with my, with my auntie. She was singing in the choir. Uh, she she was a, she was a, a, a elderly lady, but uh, what 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 was that choir with, with, with the elder? Hello. Okay, that's what she was in. Yeah, she was in that choir. Yeah, Edith McLemore. Some of y'all might remember her. Yeah, Edith McLemore. That's that's my mother's sister. Yeah, and I used to come visit with her. And I used to come visit with my mother-in-law. Yeah, Sister Field, Martha Field. I mean, y'all know Martha Field. Yeah, that's my mother-in-law. Yes, yes. I'm so grateful to be here this morning that God stood me up in his pulpit just to talk to y'all for a few minutes because we have a preacher. And from what I heard, he will preach and he can preach. Y'all ain't saying that. Amen, amen. Yes, yes. We're going to get our service started on this morning. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, we thank you for your goodness and your kindness and your grace and your mercy. Your God that sees and a God that cares. And for that, Lord God, we tell you thank you. We thank you for your goodness and your kindness and your grace and your mercy. We thank you for waking us up this morning with the use of our all our limbs and the activity of our limbs. We thank you for our, a reasonable portion of our health and strength. We thank you that the bed we laid in was not our cooling board last night. We thank you that the sheets we covered up with was not our winding sheets, Lord God. We thank you that you woke us up on due time this morning because there were some people that woke up but couldn't get up. But Lord, we thank you that we got up and we came to your house of prayer, Lord God. Lord God, look on Deacon Smith family, Lord God. His twin brother died. And Lord God, we ask you to bless this bereaved family. Comfort them and strengthen them. Matter of fact, all the bereaved families all over the world, watch, watch over them. Strengthen them. Look on them, God. Because we all go through at some point of time, Lord God. Lord God, continue to remember the bereaved families. Continue, Lord God, to look on us, Lord God. Help us in our daily walks of life, Lord God. Continue to be with us like you say you will. You say you'll never leave us nor forsake us, Lord God. Have your way in our lives, Lord God. Lord God, we come to hear what the Spirit has to say to the church on this morning. Let your Shekinah glory fall in this place, in this sanctuary, Lord God. Speak to us and speak to us. And the man of God that's going to break the bread of life this morning, Lord God. Speak to him and speak to him. Word his mouth, Lord God. Give him what to say, Lord God. Bless us real good, Lord God. Have your way in our lives like you always do, Lord God. We come to give you praise, honor, and glory on this morning. Oh, we bless your name, Lord God. We bless your name, Lord God. 
God. We look up to you because you is where all our help comes from. And we thank you, Lord God, for who he is and for who he is in our lives, Lord God. Lord, we bless your name. And we thank you, Lord God, because this is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, we're going to continue to bless your holy name. And we thank you for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Oh, we thank you. It's Jesus' name. Amen. The Negro National Anthem. Let us up every voice and sing.
Negro National Anthem. Amen. Because truth be told, we have come a mighty long way. Thank Dr. King and Jesse Jackson and everyone else that paved the way for us. Y'all ain't saying that. Y'all still talking amongst y'all selves. I think I done lost y'all. I don't think y'all came to, uh, to uh, talk about what I'm talking about. Y'all ain't saying that. Hello, somebody. Y'all, I think y'all still sleeping. Y'all wake up on me. Y'all wake up on me. Amen. Let me let me move on. Uh, we're gonna do our praise and worship by our young people quiet. Yes, I 
my sister Teresa uh, Thomas in, the, in that order, and then we're going to have the occasion by Sister Cora Johnson.
also stand. Um, we're going to do the introduction, um, or I should just say an acknowledgement this morning, for ones who have paved the way for all of those who have education. Amen? So we want to acknowledge this morning all those that have had a hand in some type of education at some school, amen, whether you're a teacher, whether you're a bus driver, whether you're an administrator, whatever you do at the school, if you've been involved, we want you to stand right now, and, all, and everyone, let's just give them a hand clap of praise to God, be the glory, amen, amen, come on, y'all, come on, we can do better than that. The greetings. Uh, Miss Miss King, <laughs> please come forward. Amen, amen. Thank you. My name is Anitra. <laughs> I, 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 I appreciate that. So I bring you all greetings from the African American Research Library. I thank God um, for having me here this morning. I thank God for teaching every one of you. Um, once again, good morning and happy Black History Month. Yeah. Although this is the last Sunday of Black History Month, I want to invite each and every one of us to celebrate our history 365 days a year. I see that the theme is created in his image, Black 365. And, and what that says to me, that knowing that we are created in his image, is that we are victorious in all things that we do. Amen. So, um, so again, my name is Anitra King. I'm the assistant manager at the African American Research Library and Cultural Center, where we provide an array of opportunities and resources for community members of all ages to learn, research, and engage in black culture. The African American Research Library is the third of its kind in the nation. It was founded in 2002 with a mission to collect, preserve, interpret, and celebrate the history and culture of people of African, African American, and Caribbean descent. The African American Research Library is a flagship library within the Broward County Library System. It is 60,000 square foot, a 60,000 square foot facility with a 300 seat auditorium where we host author events, concerts, films, lectures, theatrical productions, and public, seminar, public seminars. There is history, art, and culture throughout the building. The library has a 5,000 square foot museum where our goal is to highlight black art and culture. We are currently preparing for our next ex exhibition, which I invite all of you to, which will open in March, is Authentic African Mask, so, uh, titled Symbols of the Spirit. Throughout the library, inside and out, you will, I'm sorry, my, <laughs> thank you. Uh, throughout the library, inside and out, you will notice what we call a Dinkra symbols. These are symbols from Africa that represents a concept. For example, the one on the outside of the African American Library is called the Dwinimon, meaning humility, strength, wisdom, and learning. We also have a Harambe room, a circular room that has amazing acoustics. And normally when we take people in that room, we always sing the Black National Anthem. This room is open and has digital prints on canvas representing people of Broward County, heroes and pioneers, civil rights struggles, again, the Black National Anthem by James Weldon Johnson, and the diaspora. We also have digital prints of Dr. Vaughn D. Mizell, who many of you may know. The Mizell family also has a permanent display in the library on the second floor. The Mizell family is one of the pioneer families right here in Broward County, who moved here back in 1910. Did you know that the father, Isidore, built the first school for black children in Dania? Um, and he also farmed until 1964. Libraries in the black community 
originated in the offices of Reverend Ivory Mizell. Um, the city of Fort Lauderdale purchased their first books for the library, and then in 1970, it moved to Six Trunk Boulevard, which we knew as the Reverend D. Von, Von D. Mizell Library, and now we know this library as the African American Research Library Cultural Center. The visionary of the African American Library was Sam Morrison, who was the former director of Broward County Library. He imagined a major research facility, a cultural center, and a historical archive dedicating to documenting the African diaspora right here in South Florida. We have a special collection archives that's free and open to the public by appointment. And these special collections hold over one million items, including an African mass collection, our local community oral history, Alex Haley manuscripts and newspapers dating all the way back to the 1800s. We even have Esther Rose collections, including her Emmy Award. We have photographs of families in Broward County, the Ethel Mizell Pappy collection, which contains clippings, photographs, correspondence, awards, and papers that document the life and career of Dr. Von D. Mizell. We even have special notes and photographs relating to the Provident Hospital, which was the first black hospital right here in Fort Lauderdale. So there is so much for us to go to the African American Research Library and Cultural Center to learn. And I invite you all to come over. It's a place where we can not only learn about our history, but you can bring your history to the facility so that we can put it in our special collections. We also offer programs and resources that are centered around black culture and history. Um, hopefully each one of you received a copy of the Legacy um, newspaper, which is an organization that we work with to publish a parent's guide to black history because we know that it takes all of us to teach our young children about our history. We also collaborated with Broward County Transit on a program called Thread. So you can download, you can download a digital app that will highlight historical sites right here in Broward County. It provides the photos, information, and citations for each. And what I want to also add is users can add their own locations. So what I'm hearing is this church is a hit one of our historical sites. So check out the app and add this onto that Threads app. Currently, we're working on a Black History Project that offers Black History Saturday monthly school classes for our um, middle and high school students and adults. So if you're interested in learning more about your history, or if you want to send your uh, middle or high school student, we offer free Black History classes every month. Um, uh, coming up in, uh, on the 29th of this month, we all, we're offering something called Cultural Conversations, where we will have the author Tim Spofford discuss the stories and the research from Drs. Kenneth and Matt, uh, maybe Clark, who did the doll test back, back in 1950. This doll test was influenced the na landmark U.S. Supreme Court case of Brown versus Board of Education. Last but not least, we um, March 21st through 23rd, we will present our Africana Arts and Humanities Festival. And this year's theme is Rootedness, a retrospective on 50 years of black literature and culture. So there is a lot of history that we have right around the corner at the African American Research Library and Cultural Center. I invite you all to come out Pay us a visit, learn a little bit more, bring us a little bit more. And I know there's a lot of history right here in this congregation. So thank you all for having me. And I look forward to seeing you all in the library and continue to, to make history, to celebrate history, to uplift our history 365 days. Amen. We are black history. Amen. Garrett Morgan, 
he created the traffic like if some of y'all don't know. But there was a whole lot of things that he did besides that. As black people, we need to patent our stuff. So the other persuasion don't steal it. Y'all ain't saying that. Amen. Let me let me sit down. Uh, Sister, Sister Pitt. Amen. Keep going up there, Rev. Amen. He's sharing our history with us. Let me just set uh, the stage here, of course. Good morning to everyone. And I want to, of course, thank everyone for being here with us this morning. To God be the glory for everything that has been shared thus far on this morning. Amen. We are excited this morning about uh, what has taken place in this building. We do acknowledge the entire pulpit, and of course our Chairman Deacon, thank you so much for this opportunity of allowing Mount Nebo to have uh, this celebration again this year for Reverend Dr. Moses E. Monroe Sr. and Sister Edna May Monroe. Amen. Amen. God be the glory. And right now, we are going to proceed, and we're going to have a special presentation coming from, if you haven't seen these purple jackets in the building by now, amen. We're going to have this frat come before us this morning, and um, they're going to be led by our own Brother Kedron Willis. And of course, for you all who may not know, um, there is the Divine Nine, and they're going to tell you a little bit about that this morning, something dear to, should be dear to all of our hearts, because they are certainly an advocate for education. So, Brother Kedron, it is on you. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Everybody looks amazing this morning. Black is beautiful. Black is beautiful. All right. Giving honor to God who's having my life, to the pulpit. Uh, deaconesses, deacons, chairman deacon, we bring you greetings as the brothers of Omega Sci-Fi Fraternity Incorporated. Today, we're going to present the Educational Litany and also the Divine Nine, a summary of the Divine Nine. So, if you turn to your program where it says Educational Litany, we're going to recite this together. Everybody, please stand. Okay. Let us remember that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. Psalms 111 and 10. Congregation. Thank you, God, for the education we have received and the opportunities to increase our knowledge. We bless our parents who introduced us to reading relationships, and life skills. Congregation. We thank you, God, for good teachers, good books, public libraries, and the educational programs of television and radio. Congregation. Schools for the teachers, the students, and the workers. Congregation. We pray for the members of this congregation who are involved in all aspects of education teachers, counselors, principals, and other administrators, board members, secretaries, custodians, and nurses. Congregation. these colleges and other institutions of adult learning. We pray for their students. Make us aware of the injustice in our society about which so many students complain. Alright, this last segment, I want to hear everybody loud and proud. We pray for literacy program for Bible societies and distributors of Christian lit literature at home and abroad. All?
teaching and preaching the ministries of, con- of our congregation, creating those who are called and instruct to your people, a mind and a heart committed to studying the word, your word. You may be seated. And now, at this portion, we're going to have our line brother, uh, Brother Ricardo Henry. He's going to give you a summary of the divine now. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. So glad to see everyone here this morning. Let me ask you a question. What what do it does come? Okay. Fantasia, Steve Harvey, Jesse Jackson, Durango Marshall, Coretta Scott King, Amari Harwick, Kay Michelle, Dr. Shaquille O'Neal, Michael Jordan, Marvin Sapp. Kamala Harris, Colin Kaepernick. What do they have in common? Anybody know? Say the They're all a part of the Divine Nine. Um, the Divine Nine, which is affectionately known as the Divine Nine, is officially known as the National Pan Hellenic Council, or better known as the Divine Nine. Here it comes. They're all Christian based organizations. I'm going to say that again. They are all Christian based organizations. I don't, see, I don't care what you see on YouTube. They are all Christian based organizations. And I'm going to quickly run through them um, just so that you are um, aware. The Omega Sci-Fi Fraternity is a part of the Divine Nine. Alpha Phi Alpha, which was established in 1906 um, at Cornell University. And then Alpha Kappa Alpha, which was uh, um, established January 15th in 1908. I'm kind of going in order. Um, Delta Sigma Theta, which was founded in January 13th, 1913. Um, Kappa Alpha Psi, um, which was established um, in uh, January 5th, 1911. Um, did I mention Omega Sci Fi? That was established in uh, November 17th, 1911 at Howard University. And after them, we have Phi Beta Sigma, which was established January 9th, 1914. And then their sister fraternity, Zeta Phi Beta, and they were established on January 16th, 1920. And then finally, we have Sigma Gamma Rho, which was established November 12th, 1922. And then the last fraternity, Iota Phi Theta, which was established in September 19th, 1963. I forgot to mention the Omega Sci-Fi Fraternity that was established in 1911 on a Friday night in Third Crown Hall at Howard University. Like the Black Church, the D9 was established and is a part of the fabric as well as the foundation of Black culture. I'm going to be clear on that. We know now that we have entities and forces that are trying to erase who we are. And so we have to stay strong and stay steadfast as the black church, as the black um, as the black community, as well as our black organizations. Let's continue with supporting these organizations for their positive uplift, as well as their scholarship and excellence. Thank you. Apologies. We're going to make sure that we recognize those in the audience. So if you're part of the Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity, please stand. Typical Alpha sometimes. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'm going to be back. All right. Um, what about our AKAs? And the AKAs in the building, please stand. All right. All right. Stay standing, please. What about my sisters of Delta, Sigma, Theta? They got the right year, but the wrong date. Kappa, Alpha, Psi. All right, there you go in the back. All right. Are there any brothers of Omega Psi Phi in the building? All right. What about Phi Beta Sigma? Any brothers of Phi Beta Sigma? 
All right. Any of my sisters from Zeta Fabeda? Yes. All right. for this next group, Sigma Gamma Rho. We have any Sigma Gamma Rho's in the building? The daughter. The daughter? Okay. All right, yeah. Very good. And my heart's going to smile. We just got one Iota Phi Theta in the building. Just one. Not one? All right. Right. We want to give everybody a round of applause. Nice and purple uh, blazers. Such a good We can cool it down for our Thank you. Come on, y'all. Let's give it up for all of our fraternities and our sororities. Amen. Let me just tell y'all, they make some huge donations. To God be the glory. And now I have the privilege of presenting to the family of Mount Nebo and to all of our guests and our family and our friends, uh, if you will, the continual legacy that is here this morning, there's one that's gonna come and represent them for uh, a few minutes this morning, but why we are here again, and it is of course, celebrate Reverend Dr. Mosley Monroe Sr. and Sister Edna L. Monroe. Uh, this morning, before she comes, we're going to ask, they have this year, uh, uh, how it works with our scholarship. There is one descendant from the Monroe family that is awarded a scholarship yearly. And we wait for the Matriot to, of course, um, honor us with all of their graduates. And then, of course, the scholarship uh, committee makes a decision of which one will receive. This morning, uh, we are pleased to have with us, though, uh, Tamara. She's not, she didn't get here this Tamaria, okay, with that J. Okay, but Tamaria, um, they have one this year uh, that is a graduate, and we received the finals, we received that by June, and then of course we um, acknowledge and let you all know. But we do acknowledge that great-granddaughter. Wait, she is here? Okay. Okay, this is Tamaria, okay, she is here. Stand, I thought she was <laughs> Amen. Amen. Let's have a round of applause for her this morning. Amen. No, you stay standing. Uh, we want to acknowledge you after your graduation. We know that you will not be back this way, of course, in June. We celebrate our graduates. Amen. Um, so we, of course, acknowledge you now. Um, if there's another that's going to come behind you, my real family that you know we have in the graduating uh, course this year, we acknowledge them also. But this morning, thank you so much because you all—they come from a long way. They come from some ghouls, Richmond Heights. So we give them their honor this morning. Amen. So we're going to ask that those uh, that person who's going to speak to you this morning, if you'll go ahead and come forward for us very uh, quickly this morning to acknowledge the Monroe family. I was coming, but I ain't going to speak either. Thank you all for the invite, as always. Um, Yamaria is the graduate of the family of um, Grandpa and Grandma. Um, she's the daughter of my brother, James Taylor, um, and granddaughter of my mother, Edna. welcome you all to Mount Vivo. Continue to come, stay, and enjoy. We're going to do something very quickly here. Today at Mount Vivo is our Young People's Day also. Amen. The fourth Sunday is when we celebrate our young people. So y'all come on, give a hand clap of praise for them. So this morning, something that we do when it is time to celebrate our report cards, of course, we acknowledge our young people, amen? This is a tradition, and today being, of course, a celebrating education, we want to honor our young people uh, very quickly. So we're going to call your name, and those that are not here, um, just raise your hand, those who are here just to acknowledge with them, and then we will, of course, uh, make sure that you receive what is due their honor. So first, we want to acknowledge Sister Ari Monroe, um, I, 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 Ari has uh, 
Well, she's sick. So we're uh, going to acknowledge her this morning. But she received, of course, the A and B honor roll. Amen. And such a special in February for her. She was just inducted into the Junior National Honor Society with a 3.6 GPA. Amen. And that is Sister Donnie Monroe's granddaughter. We want to acknowledge Kate. Go ahead and come on down, Kate. Kate received the honor roll this quarter also. Amen. Kate Townsend. His parents, Sister Monique and Brother uh, brother Chief, amen. He also was acknowledged for his 100% perfect score on his HBCU project. Amen. <laughs> we're gonna, now parents, we're going to put the gift in their hand because we're going to have a lot going on at the church. So we're not going in back. So make sure they keep their gift. Amen. We're going to have... Um, Sister Lakeisha, come on down. Amen. And we all roll. Amen. Congratulations to her. And the names we want to call uh, also, uh, let's say, Sister Gloria. Uh, that is, oh, well, of course, Sister Nikki and Brother Keijan are her parents. Amen. Sister Gloria is not able to be here. That's Sister Angela's uh, granddaughter. Uh, she also was acknowledged for her above award. That's bringing up the grades award. Now, that's a new one for me, y'all. But okay. <laughs> Amen. To God be the glory. That is awesome. That is awesome. We want to acknowledge this morning also Camille Wade. Amen. Come on down. And the honor roll. Amen. Camille. Amen. And she's the granddaughter of Sister Lisa. Amen. Black. We want to acknowledge... Sister London, come on down. She's the receiver of the third star on a roll. Amen. Grandparents, Sister Bay, amen. We want to acknowledge, um, they're not here this morning as well. We want to acknowledge Dylan Caldwell and the on a roll. Amen. Right through to Stephen, amen. We want to acknowledge Dallas Caldwell, a on a roll. Amen. These are, uh, the, the children of Reverend Caldwell and Sister Caldwell, amen. We want to acknowledge Jasmine. Is she still? Jasmine, come on over now. We're getting to our high schoolers. And be on the road, y'all. Amen. We want to acknowledge Keith John. Come on, and be on the road. Amen. Our high schoolers. Tamari, come on. And be on the road. Our high schoolers, come on. We want to acknowledge MJ Castile, parents, Sister Lakeisha, A and B on the roll. Amen. Brother Keedron, where are you at? Come on, A and B on the roll. We want to acknowledge. Oh, did I miss this on here? Oh, okay. Um, Jelanta, come on down. Jelanta Wise, amen. Come on down. Amen. Now we're going to have Egypt and we're going to have you come on down as well. Come on down. All of our young people and all of our young people that are in the back. We're our ushers, the rest of them here. Jo Brother Jory, come on. I'm sorry. Come on. Come on up. Brother Jory on the road. Come on. Come on. Now when they get into the high school and senior they don't want to be, you know, acknowledged and called out. But amen. Amen. We are good. Now, everybody, come on, y'all. Let's give it up for them this morning. This is only a portion of them. And we want to celebrate them with their continued education. Amen. We want to always, always acknowledge them for what they're doing. You all are so special in what you do. Congratulations on the projects. Congratulations on all of your awards that you received this quarter as well. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Thank you, parents, guardians. Grandparents, thank you, everybody. Amen. Amen. The young people is the future. Amen. They, they coming up behind us. And we got to stay in their ear. Obviously, train up a child in the way he must go so he won't depart. Y'all ain't saying that. Amen. Amen. Thank God for Jesus. I see the cues had left out. But they came back in. I said, well, they gone already? <laughs> but there was a word in the house. And I wanted to let them know, and Aunt Williams too, that my, my son, my younger son is a cute. He graduated from 
State Chapel for a full ride to play football. He graduated from Middle Tennessee State University. And he's a Q as well. I'm not a Q, but I went to, to the University of Hard Knocks. Y'all understand that? I came up on 6th Street. That was my university. Amen. Hey, I see you rocking with Amen. Hey, Thank God. It's often time, y'all. We all can play a part in this. I got my tithes and offering. I got my twenty five dollars for the joint scholarship foundation. Amen. And we can all be a part of this here. Usher, we need a tithe envelope. We got Sister Willis. Just raise your hand, raise your hand if you need a tie for the Lord. One back does something with the back of the He's of age 
and he can speak for himself. The song say, I will bless the Lord all times. I just got to say something real quick. I met it for the first time. I just picked up on his spirit. He has one of those spirits of the old spirit. It's a young man. But you can feel it. I thank God for it. Amen. Started at the age of what? Ten. Scripture reading. I'm just going to read from one verse. Genesis chapter 1. Verse number 31. Amen. Genesis chapter 1 verse 31 and God saw everything that he had made and behold it was very good and that everything and oh, excuse me and the and the evening and the mornings was the sixth day amen God had added Add a blessing to the readers and the hearers of this holy word because his word is already blessed.
bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for being God and being God all by yourself. We know that beside you there is no other. And we come this place, this time, and this moment to give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise which you so rightfully deserve. Now, hide me behind your glorious cross. Touch these lips of clay. Anoint these ears of the same material. And I'll take no credit for anything that you do. For it's in your matchless holy son Jesus' name. Let the church shout amen. amen. Giving honor to God, heal of our lives, to this great church, these preachers and deacons, and all of you, our father's children. To all of you from the Hilltop Missionary Baptist Church, we thank you for traveling the ways to be here with us. It's amazing and amazing to all of you in Hilltop. We thank God for all of you, these great musicians, this great choir who we have heard from. God bless you. To this great honor of family, God bless you. I have to ask the question, is it good for us to be here? And I believe it is. The book of Genesis, if you follow me right quick, I'm going to do something that I don't normally do. I'm going to use two forms of scripture today. And if you follow me, I believe the Lord will bless you. Genesis chapter number one, our theme of scripture, it comes from verse 31. Genesis chapter 1, verse 31, as it was read earlier. And God saw everything that he had made. And behold, it was very good. And that's what it says. He saw everything that he made. And behold, it was very good. In that same book of Genesis, if you flip over to chapter number 50, Flip over to chapter number 50 in that same book, and you'll see in verse number 20 of chapter number 50, it says, But as for you, ye thought evil against me. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But God meant it for my good. Yeah. Yeah. You thought evil against me. Uh -huh. yeah. But God meant it for my good. I want to talk for a few minutes on the subject, if I knew then what I know now. All right. I just tell somebody, if I knew then what I know now. Uh, there are just certain situations in life uh, where we make the claim, if I knew then what I know now. If I knew then what I know now, I would have been there a little more. Yeah. If I knew then what I know now, I would not have made that decision. If I knew then what I know now, I wouldn't have went out with that crowd of people. If I knew then what I know now, I wouldn't have bought those shoes online because they were too tight. <laughs> if I knew then what I knew now, I wouldn't have bought that outfit because it don't fit right on me. We all have an if I knew then what I know now moment. And in order for us to wrap this thing together, we have to get these two texts and, and we have to know where we're coming from. And if you want to know where you're coming from, you have to know that we were made in the image of God. It's a Margo day in the Hebrew, the image of God. God in Genesis chapter 1 God speaks into existence his creation for six days and this lets us know that it's not this big bang theory as some of us want to believe or as science would call it but I want to tell you there was a big bang when God said let there be and there was uh, that's the big bang when God said let there be light and there was light and he said that it was good. And I have to tell you, we will find in chapter 1, uh, verse 31, and God saw everything that he made. 
and shared that it was very good. And I'm so glad that when God sees me, he doesn't see that I'm just good. Uh, but he sees that I'm very good. When, when the world tries to throw all their status symbols on me, they, they say we need to look brighter or look taller or look slimmer. I don't glad or don't look like what the world says I need to look like. But I go by what God says. And when God sees me, he says I'm very good. And you know what they said. We look too dumb. Our noses are a little too big. Our hair is too nappy. We are not good enough. But I'm good just as I am. And I'm not just good, but I'm very good. I think I need to know that I don't care what others think about me. I want to be conformed and focused on what God knows about me. Yeah, yeah in this book of Genesis. We hear about so many passages. There are so many accounts recorded in the book of Genesis. There's this account of creation. We hear about Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, Noah and the great flood, the Tower of Babel, Sodom and Gomorrah, the lineage of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and then we hear of a young man. By the name of Joseph. Wow, yeah. And he's the son of Jacob. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, the son of Isaac. His, his great grandparents are Abraham and Sarah. Right. Yeah, you know this. Let's, let's break this down right quick. God told Abraham that he would bless him and Sarah with the child. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, in their old age. And God did exactly what he promised. Yeah. He, he blesses them with his son. And after God blessed Abraham and Sarah with a son, he told Abraham, take him up on Mount Moriah and sacrifice your only son. But just like God, when they got there, there was a ram in the bush. And God spared Isaac's life. And then at the age of 70, he has a child. And we know what those two boys, Jacob and Esau, uh, their mother, Rebecca, uh, couldn't have children, but God hears her prayer yeah. and blesses her with these two sons. And it's sad that these two fought in their mother's womb. Yeah. It's it sad that there's two nations in thy womb, two manner of people shall be separated. Yeah. Said from thy bowels, one people shall be stronger than the other. Yeah. And the elder shall serve the young man. Well, uh, the story goes on of how Jacob and tricked Esau of getting his birthright. Yeah. Uh, you know the story. He comes home hungry from being out in the field and he gives up his birthright for some food. Yes. And you know he gets tricked and then year later, Jacob gets tricked by his uncle. Well, yeah. right. and he wanted one woman and when he found out that wasn't the one he wanted. Yeah. Then he brother wanted to kill him. He runs away. And now we see Jacob and Esau split. Yeah. And after this, he marries Rachel. Yeah. I'm just trying to bring y'all up to date here. After many, many years, God heard Rachel's prayer yeah. and blessed her with a son by the name of Joseph. Well, yeah. Now we have Joseph. He's Jacob's 11th son, but he's Rachel's first son. Yeah. And all the other children thought that he was his father's favorite. Yeah. And, and I'm sorry, but, but when we have the favor of God on our mind, uh, you just got it. You don't have to go around explaining to people why I have what I have and why I do what I do and make excuses of why you are who you are. I'm here because of the favor of God. The Lord said I'll be blessed in the city and blessed in the field, blessed in my going out and blessed in my coming in. I'm just blessed. He 
preacher, I know I'm in the middle of a message, but you ought to claim that over your life. I got favor of God on my life. I, I'm blessed. My family's blessed. My children are blessed. My finances are blessed. I'm just blessed. And the devil can't do nothing about it. And, and Jacob, he didn't help much. He goes and gives his son this coal. Of colors, uh, which represents the divine favor of God. Right, right. Joseph, this dreamer, 17 years old, mm -hmm. uh, he dreams his first dream that uh, his brothers, as uh, they are gathering grain in the fields, that his brother's grain bowed down to his grain. Yeah. Uh, the second dream, the sun and the moon. And the 11 stars bowed down to him. Yeah. And you know when he told them this dream. Uh, they began thinking of ways to get rid of him. Yeah. Most of them wanted to kill him. But Reuben said don't kill him. He said that we can put him in this empty pit. And without the brothers knowing Reuben was going to go back and try to get him. Yeah. But on that way to do that. They saw some Ishmaelite servants and they sold him for 20 pieces of silver, not even a hundred dollars. Right. Uh, the merchants took Joseph to Egypt yeah. and put him up for sale. Yeah. I, I need you to imagine this. Well, we know this story all so well. You are on the path to power, on the path of influence and importance. Then in a moment, everything is gone. Yeah. Stripped of your coat. Yeah. Uh, you are betrayed by people who should have loved you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, separated from your father. You are sold as a slave and carried off to a strange land. Yeah. Uh, imagine how this 17 year old man feels at a slave auction. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. He, imagine the lies that Satan must be telling him. Uh -huh. Yeah, God promised you that your brothers would serve you. God said they would bow down to you. You're a slave. They are better than you. You know Satan can talk to us. And when things just don't look like what God has promised, just like in the text, imagine our ancestors on the bottom of slave ships being taken from their homeland into a strange land. Right, yeah. but, but while they are on this slave ship, mm -hmm. yeah. the slave captain uh, said there's something going on down there. Yeah. Uh, they ought to be scared for their lives, yeah. but yeah. I hear some moaning and groaning. Yeah. I hear some chants and I hear some melodies and some sounds of victory. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why we're here today. Uh, to tell somebody to just hold on. Yeah. And if God said it, that settles it. Yeah. Satan and a million armies cannot stop what God has for us. Right. And if I knew then what I know now, I'll tell them, lift up your hands. Yeah. Oh, ye gates and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Yeah. Somebody ask the question, who is King of glory. The Lord strong and mighty. He is the King of glory. It may have looked like all was lost. Dreams shattered. Nothing good was going to come out of this situation. But Joseph had to understand that the God that gave him the dream was working behind the scenes. And, and he needed to know what Genesis 39 reminds us that the Lord was with Joseph. And I need somebody to know that the Lord is with you. And I want us to know that even when we can't see him, when, when we can't feel him in our lives, God is with us. Somebody say, in my trial, he's with me. In my situation, he's with me. In my trouble, He's with me in my pain. Yeah. He's with me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Nothing just happens in the life of a Christian. Uh -huh. Our steps are orchestrated. Uh -huh. yeah. And our steps are ordered uh -huh. 
by the Lord. Yes. And you see, Joseph's brother sold him for bad. But what they did was put him right where God planned for him to be. Yeah. God set everything up just like it needed to be. So Joseph arrived exactly where he should have been when he needed to be there. And it gets me because Joseph might have been a slave, but he was safe. In the arms of God. Yes. He might have been separated from his earthly father, but his heavenly father went with him. Yes. And he gets to Egypt. Yes. Joseph ends up working with Potiphar. Right. And yeah, Potiphar is called the captain of the guard. Yes. And his position is the chief executioner. Yeah. Yeah. He is responsible for protecting his boss and dealing with anybody that tried to get in his way. Yeah. Yeah. Potiphar, in his position, comes in contact with all the dignitaries, yeah. all the political officials yeah. of Egypt. Yeah. Uh, you see God working right there. Yeah. Yeah. Joseph would be in the presence of all these great people. Yeah. Why is it that when things start going good in our life, the enemy knows how to show up? Yeah. And if somebody can say, he's shown up in my life. And he's shown up in the life of my family, in the life of my children, in my finances. The enemy knows how to show up. And he shows up in the life of Joseph. And right there, Potiphar's wife tries to seduce him. But Joseph gets away, but she tells Potiphar one thing. And Joseph ends up in prison. But even in prison, Joseph had the favor of God. Even in prison, the Lord was with him. And I need you to know, when God says you are good and very good, there is nothing that the enemy can do against you. No matter the trick and the trap, you will always have the victory. And he used this time in prison as his training time for his reigning time. Yeah, yeah, it was just training for his reigning. And as the scripture says, if we suffer with him, we'll also reign with him. When the devil is busy messing, Come on, God is busy blessing. He, he, he's making a way for us. He's shaping us and molding us into what he would have us to be. Yeah. Yeah. Joseph's in jail and he meets the butler and the baker. Yeah. God is still in the plan. He interprets this dream and all he asked for the butler was when you get free. Yeah. Remember me. Uh, when you get back to your position of power, just remember me. And some time has passed, and now Pharaoh is looking for somebody to interpret his dream. And the butler then remembers there's somebody in prison that can interpret your dream. He says, no, no magician can interpret this dream. No, none of the fortune tellers of Egypt can tell me my dream. Nobody can interpret the dream. And the fact that Pharaoh kept having the dream meant that it was going to happen soon. And Pharaoh gets connected with Joseph. And Joseph tells him that there are going to be seven years of plenty. And then there are going to be seven years of famine. And it's going to devastate the land. And the fact that Pharaoh is still having this dream, he said, we got to get ready. He says, people from all over are going to come to Egypt to get food. God's preparing the way. His brothers had to show up and get this food. Pharaoh makes uh, Joseph the second in command. Yeah. And the thing I like here is that God promised you something. Yeah. It is going to come to pass. Yeah. His brothers don't recognize him. But guess what happens? Just as he dreamed 
in the earlier chapters, yeah. when his brothers get before him, yeah. they have to get on their knees yeah. and bow. Yeah. And he says to them, go back and get your brother, yeah. your younger brother Benjamin, yeah. and bring him back. Yeah. And again, when the brothers entered into his presence, not knowing who he was, they had to bow down before him. And I'm here to tell you what God has promised you is going to come to pass. And if we are obedient to God and follow his commandments, we find favor with God. And I know, I know Joseph could have been angry. He could have said, Lord, you got me in this type of situation. I'm only doing what you asked me to do. And he could have lost favor with God. But you know what he did? He kept on trusting him. He said, I can't see it, but I know you made me a promise. I, I don't feel it right now, but I know that you made me a promise. And before God quiet become void under him, heaven and earth will come apart. And I'm so glad to know so glad. that God is with me. Yes. Uh, there are some examples in the scripture that know that God is with them. Uh -huh. David faced Goliath mm, yeah. and said, this is the Lord's battle. Uh -huh. He knew that the Lord was with him. Yes. Uh, the Lord is with the children of Israel in the parting of the Red Sea. Yes. The Lord is with Daniel in the lion's den. And even though he was put in that situation, he did not doubt the favor of God. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah times will get tough. Uh -huh. I know somebody told you every day we're going to be sunny. Uh -huh. I know they told you you weren't going to have no problems. Yeah. But there are some witnesses in here that know that the rain is going to fall sometime. Yeah. I know they told you it was going to be peaches and cream. But sometimes that just gets fruit flies and spoiled milk. Yeah. I know they told you everything was going to be sunny. But somebody knows sometimes you got to walk through the valleys yeah. of the shadows of death. But Joseph made up in his mind, I won't let go of his hand. When the storms are raging, when the winds start blowing in my life, my soul has been anchored in the Lord. When the favor of God is on your life, your way is already made. But God has for you. It's for you. And I know you say God won't use me like this. Uh, but when we read the Bible, the people God used all had problems. Abraham's a liar. But God used him to be the father of many nations. Moses stuttered, but God used him to deliver the people of Israel out of bondage. David loved women that weren't his wife, but God used him to become king of Israel. God uses us. Even when we don't faint, we should be used. We may be looking for the favor of God to come in one form. But the favor of God has no limitation. As I head to my seat, I had a short amount of time and I'm wrapping this to a close. Chapter 1 in Genesis says, verse 31, and God saw mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. that he made yeah. and said it was very good. Uh, don't worry about what men are trying to do. Uh, we have to go through the process. And the process from chapter 1 to chapter 50 is hard. Uh, but you got to go through the process. Uh, those those Others have to go through the process to become on. Uh, those rocks have to go through the process to become diamonds. And a Christian has to go through the process of the fire. But when we have been tried in the fire, we shall come forth as pure gold. I have to tell you, I've got good news this morning. Yes, that I've looked at the end of the book. Uh -huh. And at the end of the story, yes. uh, you need to know we've gone through mm -hmm. yes. and it's tried to break us, but we may bend, yes, but we won't break. Yes. 
they try to get you to give up, but hold on. Uh, that's why Genesis 50 and 20 reminds us, but as for you, you meant it for evil against me. Now you thought I was going to give up. Uh, you thought I was going to throw in the towel. You meant it for evil against me. But somebody can say the Lord meant it for my good. The Lord meant that situation for my good. He meant that sickness for your good. The Lord meant it for my good. The favor of God is on your life. And when the favor of God is on your life, and he'll give you that house that you don't have the credit to buy. He'll give you that job that you're not qualified to get. He's going to put money in your pocket. His favor will put you in places that when you show up, you don't deserve to be there. Uh, the favor of God, when it's on your life, you can stand with precedence. When, when God gives you favor, he'll give it over to children. He'll give it over your family. He'll give it over the church. He'll give it over the ministry. He'll even give you favor. They say, how did you get here? But when the favor, when the favor of God is on your life, you get special treatment. When the favor of God is on your life, people do things for you. When the favor of God is on your life, situations just work out. Yeah. <laughs> 
teachers, preachers, proclaimers, educators, pillars in the community. Nobody can do this but Jesus. We offer Christ to you today. There may be one. Lord, do it. All right.